Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Alan Wake 2 and the Valhalla Wellness Center where we are just about to pursue a wounded and seemingly quite agitated Tor Anderson uh, out into God only knows what. I can't imagine it's going to be a pleasant time for us. Boy, that's something. You know what? Oh, that's a very unsettling thing they've developed there. Can get away from it. Do I need to shoot it? Okay. Yeah, wow, that's that's unsettling. That's bad for me to look at and experience in every way. Okay. Need to catch up with Tor. Went through an awful lot of shotgun ammo very quickly. It was cool though. It was a cool effect. Huh. This must have been tours. Yeah. We hear a lot about his hammer. I have to admit I'm a little um a little unimpressed. Lost and found. Mittens, homemade, notebook full of daily meal plans, a nice fountain pen, an antique hair clip, very pretty. Address inquiries to your friend, Rose. I found a box of ammo for a hunting rifle in the cafeteria. Rose, I think you left some behind again. You really should be more careful. Take a tip from Vlad, a fellow weapon enthusiast. Always lock it up. Come collect it from me whenever you can. Uh, I bought that tea you said you liked. I can make you a cup. Y you know, if you want. Very smooth, Vlad. Very smooth. Uh... So, hold on. Let me check our map again real quick here. Oh, the workshop where the hunting rifle is was right outside the security room. I, for some reason, thought we needed to progress further. But, yeah, we're, like, almost all the way through the place. Okay, let me turn around and go grab that. Although, I guess... Do we have room for it? Well, we probably do now. I just spent a bunch of things, so... I'm very good at leaving the weapons behind until, uh... Until the very last moment. It's a skill. Okay, also pages. Pages are important, I guess. Nope, we don't get an Alan Wake of this one either. Ilma was nervous. His palms were clammy. He lowered his phone. Mulligan isn't picking up. Yako shook his head, pointing at his own phone. Uh, same with Thornton. Ilmo didn't like it. No one was answering the phone at the workshop in Watery, either. Something was up. It had to be the writer. Had to be. The Koskula brothers were crouching in the bushes across from the Elderwood Palace Lodge, its lights shining in the night. They couldn't wait any longer. The brothers knew Saga was in Watery, visiting her trailer. Going now was their only chance to do this without hurting her. Ilmo stood up and a crowd of deer masks looked his way. Okay, this is it. The rider is the target. Take him down and it's all over. Only shoot the Fed if you have to. This is our big moment. We watch in the night. The crowd murmured the chant back to him. Ilmo turned to face the hotel. He could see Saga's partner in the window. Ilmo slapped his brother on the shoulder. The brothers donned their masks. The cult of the tree was ready. I feel like they should have had their... 
their masks on prior to that moment, probably. Okay, might have to rearrange things a little bit. Oh, another deer head. That's as a good always. Deer. It's got to come to something, right? The fact that we can always interact with the deer heads and never other animals or anything. Uh, so. We actually are still pretty short on space here, huh? Um, well, I probably don't need to be carrying this many hand flares. Or, honestly, this many um, crossbow bolts. The crossbow bolts are really, uh, really awkward. The thing is, like, ammo is the thing you want to have a lot of, right? Because you blow through it really, really quickly. Uh, whereas, like, with medical supplies... <sighs> I wish I had a better sense of how big this thing was going to be. I bet it's the size of the crossbow. I bet it's a two... I bet it's a one by three. Can I... If I try to pick it up... No, it doesn't give me any indication. All right, well... Apparently there's handgun ammo in there that I missed. Yeah, it's not a terribly long run. Wait, where was it? Oh no, it's in the room across to the security room. Um, yeah, we'll run to the dispensary. We'll make some changes real quick. Huh, just didn't grab it. I'll drop off some hand flares. The thing is, even in situations where I do use hand flares, I don't use a bunch of them all at once, right? So we probably don't need to carry a bunch of them all at once. We can afford to have some uh, left behind. So let's move these to here. Uh, yeah, we'll just carry one stack of those and maybe also not two stacks of trauma pads, and that gives us enough space for hunting rifle and ammunition. But it's definitely getting a little narrow. I would love to get more, um, more inventory space. The idea probably is that you're just not supposed to be carrying all the guns at the same time. Maybe it's even longer than I'm expecting. Uh, let's make room for it here then. Four spaces? Four spaces, crybiny. Well, that's really inconvenient, honestly. Cause then like, this gun takes up an entire line in your inventory once you count the need for it to, you know, carry ammunition. Uh, I think we're about to get into some, some serious shit. Maybe what we do is we run with our crossbow, see if we can't free up a space, earn ourselves a little bit more. I do, I do dislike it. I do dislike that thing. Yeah. Well, I don't love it, but maybe we just leave that here. Gosh, it sure does sound like someone's walking around out here. Okay, none of this stuff is interactable. Nothing's going to happen without us being present. At least, you know, not if it's supposed to happen with us present. Come back! Tor, don't go! Tor Anderson, you come out of here this minute! That water is bad for you! Tor, wait! <laughs> Cynthia Weaver, I know it's you! This kind of behavior is not okay! Let him go! Damn. 
I wonder what exactly Rose knows. You know, everybody around here seems, you know, pretty tuned in. I think there'd be a temptation in a lot of stories like this to make it so like people are remarkably ignorant. And I appreciate that that is not the way they've gone here. You know, the cult knows some things. Rose has her thing with Alan Wake and whatever. Um, but maybe we can find out exactly what. What was that? Where did Tor go? What on earth do you mean, Sokka? Tor is resting in the wellness center. Remember? What? We both saw him go into the pond. <laughs> okay. Are you fucking with me? Or, or is this a story again? Because the thing is, now. I do have this. Let's cool it with the language. She's clearly lying to me. Yeah. Why? Through like gritted teeth and everything. All right, Rose. Well, we're going to get at it one way or another. Rose watched Tora go into the pond. Why is she lying to me? The secret mission for Alan's number one fan. The hero will say Wake has returned. We're all characters in his story. Gee whiz. I'm not his fucking character. But I can use that phrase to make Rose stop lying to me. Wake has returned. Also, it's not like I'm lying to her or anything. Cynthia took Tor. What happened to her? When the darkness touches your head, your bookshelf gets shuffled. I put her lamp in the shoe box. What do you call a lamp lady without her lamp? Is Rose talking about Cynthia or herself? Or both? Rose. Um... Wake has returned. Oh my god. You're the hero! You're <laughs> here to save Alan! I feel so silly for trying to keep you out of the wellness center. I locked Torngale in there after they lost it, and I didn't want you getting hurt. <laughs> Before I forget, here's the page Wake told me to give you. Oh, and you'll need my keys to get around. Saga Jad, the selector on the jukebox, the missing record in its place. Saga couldn't have found it without Odin's help. A light bloomed in through the garden window. The horror story beat me to Tor. I have to rescue him. The key to this overlap is an old Gods of Asgard record. Saga Jad, the selector on the jukebox, the missing record in its place. Saga couldn't have found it without Odin's help. Standing there, Saga felt exposed, expecting the shadows to come alive. The needle crackled on the vinyl. The song swelled. Odin had said it was written for her and her mother. Her grandfather's apology. The lamentation of an old man. His heart was broken, sinking into darkness. Odin had said that the song would be a way to know Tor, a way to find him. A light bloomed in through the garden window. That's where Tor had vanished into the pond. Saga knew what she had to do. Well, let's hope that's true once I actually get to doing this. Wake is in custody. How have you been in contact with him? He leaves me messages in funny places, like the newspaper, books. Once he even wrote to me with a cloud. If it's something really important, he tells me in a dream. Okay. And what does he say to you with these clouds? Ways I can help him? How I can stay safe? Good dinner recipes? Ways to kill Taken? Lots of stuff. I've been finding some pages of writing lately, too, so he must be working on a new book! Exciting! I mean, you got to be receptive to messages to receive the message, right? Wake tells you how to kill Taken? Oh, sure. <laughs> you're the hero, so you must know all about it. All you need is a strong light and then your conventional methods of extreme violence. Simple stuff. <laughs> the tough part is hiding the bodies. I honestly don't know how to react to this. Just doing my part, sister. 
You need to get the residents out of here. It's not safe. Oh, this kind of stuff rolls right off their backs. They've lived very rich lives. Very resilient. But I already told everyone to wait at the designated muster point on the front porch. <laughs> we run drills every few months. I'm so proud of them. I'm impressed by how prepared you are. We're pretty used to this kind of thing. What happened to Tor just now? Cynthia took him. Ugh, I knew someone was messing with Tor's head. There's something wrong with the water here. Pipes acting up, black stuff coming out. <sighs> Cynthia's probably behind that, too. Does Cynthia have any connection to the cult of the tree? <laughs> oh, no, she's way too frail for that. But she used to be this town's best defense against the forces of darkness. Well, after Alan. But I guess it finally got her. Okay, let's uh let's ask another question or two here, shall we? The page mentions a missing record. Do you know where it is, Odin? Driven by passion, raging like a storm. Your grandfather made the song to apologize to your mother, Freya, and to you. Tours like a storm. Your mother did the right thing, leaving with you, even if it broke your grandfather's heart and mine. Listen to the song, Saga. It's all there. Tor only had one record made. He keeps it in the museum. Odin knows my mom's name. Okay. That makes sense. And we you have the key fob now. Me away when I was still a baby. So it should be pretty Puzzle. accessible. Stay on task. The record is in the museum. Uh, do I want to go case board? Eh, probably not right now. We have important stuff to do. I need bolt cutters. Okay, well, that's inconvenient. Okay, everybody's outside pretty much. Muster point on the front porch? Yeah, here we go. The muster point! Is there anyone who didn't show up? A few. Archie, Gail, Cynthia. If oh. they aren't here by now, then they aren't coming. It's important to be punctual. On that topic, I'd like to point out that our nightly decaf coffee service is almost half an hour behind schedule. Hello there. Are you Pat Main from the radio? That's me. And you're the federal agent everyone's been talking about. Would you have time for an interview at some point? Oh, sorry. I'm kind of in a hurry right now. Love your show, though. Very informative. Mm, thank you. Never a compromise on quality. That's my motto. Yeah, we'd be happy to have you on the show any time, me and my listeners. I, I really feel like Saga should point that thing downward. <laughs> We're talking to the old people. Have any of you noticed anything odd about Ms. Weaver? Just that Tora won't leave the poor woman alone. That brute wants one thing and one thing only. Cynthia's gotten downright bossy. Take a swim in the pond, Norman. Drink some water, Norman. Well, no one tells Norman MacDonald what to do. Huh. Mandy May, are you all right? You're bleeding. Oh, how did that happen? Oh, no, Mandy May. Oh, no. Oh, don't be a crybaby, Norman. It's nothing. I just poked my finger knitting this monster of a blanket. It really is uh, quite something. You all should stay out here a while. Until it's safe. 
I'm happy to get out of that house. Isn't it strange that I've lived in Bright Falls my whole life and I can't remember this building? The house has always been here, Norman. Remember when that poor Nora girl drowned in the bunker? Those Andersons got it so cheap because it's haunted. You get what you pay for. Yeah, I'm just going to advise that nobody think too hard about any of the qualities of this house for the moment. All right, uh, where all couldn't we get to? There is, of course, the museum, but I mean, I want to open up every, every room in here that we couldn't open before. Uh, so that's just the way the wellness center, everything else was on the, on the upper floors. Hello? What have we here? Odin Anderson stirred in his bed, his vision hazy, smudged. He felt weighted down by an ocean of dark water. Through the haze, he made out Saga. Odin felt useless. He wished he could tell Saga how his silly faces made her smile when she was young. Too young to remember. Odin used to joke that Tor was her grandfather, but he was the all-father. He smiled at the memory. Odin was the kinder of the Anderson brothers. Tor lacked patience, more volatile. The brothers fought a lot, but they were inseparable. Now Tor was missing, dragged into darkness. Odin could feel it. Time was running out for both of them. seem unable to do anything direct here when he was calling for help i kind of thought like maybe there was a uh you know a right this second kind of situation going down seems not the case all right nothing new in here to no one's surprise this tour's room changed at all doesn't look like it There are a lot of objects in this place that kind of look like um, human forms or that cast the shadow similar to a human form when you sweep your light past them very quickly. All right, so there's the museum. Oh, this is Pat's room. We are in Pat's room. I want to go up to the third floor and have a look at the, uh, the rooms up there that we weren't allowed into before we come and do this. In particular, Cynthia's is of interest to me. Hey, man. Do you know anything about the cult of the tree? Yes, yes. He who reaches for a spruce tree will stumble into a juniper. Bloom was one of them. He has kicked empty. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in his shoes, but I like his shoes. Huh. How did you know Blum was part of the cult? Oh, Fox never runs out of tricks. He's a crazy man, and he will show his ways. <laughs> Blum like to talk. <laughs> and that's <laughs> and that's it of all the things that are going on right now. I guess Saga doesn't have any reason to engage with Ati as though he is the thing that he is. Because as far as she knows, he's just another one of these people. Which is, you know, not to say nothing, but certainly not uh, certainly not what we know him to be. Okay, so some hunting rifle ammo and this does not open with that key fob. I wonder what Rose knows about this room. Key fob's no good without power. No use crying in the dark place. What has been has gone. But trouble doesn't look like this. You can go to the basement and check the generator. But look out. 
You can never know in which tree the devil sits. The basement. Sure. Thanks. Ati's always telling people to check basements. Like this is his main deal in life. I don't suppose you want to like come with me and no? Alright. That's fine. You know, it does strike me that this weapon might not be, like, the absolute best for close quarters on account of, like, it's probably got a pretty lengthy reload. Also, I didn't even know... I hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. I didn't even know there was a basement. How did I manage to miss that entirely? Is there... Oh, that's a lift. Where the hell is the basement? Uh, oh, the stairs. Okay, the stairs to it are outside. Yeah, that makes some sense. They'd have to be. So, like, yeah. All right. Can't open this with my bare hands. Oh, what? Okay. This door is not the correct door. Huh. Well, Rose is gone, which hopefully is a good sign. Ow, I dodged into it. Oh my god, I reloaded. I reloaded right in front of that guy, and I thought he was going to just, like, stand there and get ready to throw a thing at me. Okay, you know, what I will say about that is that it did kill him in one hit. Will they come inside? Let's find out. No, they will not. They felt oppression. She liked cats. Supposed to be. Ooh, not in one. All right. Well, we freed up some inventory space. Damn you and your active dodging. Okay, well, I caught him that time at least. You know, for all the trouble this thing gives you, it really doesn't do enough damage, I think, to justify the, uh... There we go. But you do get the bolts back at least some of the time. That's cool. Yeah, I gotta say, not too impressed with the uh, with the function of this weapon. But if you get the bolts back like relatively frequently, I guess that's you know that's something. What about the misses? So I definitely didn't hit him with everything, but it looks like looks like there's not anything here to have. And the one that I did drop in one, there we go. Okay. So I have compressed our ammunition slightly. I'm gonna go upstairs and grab the rifle ammo from Ati. And then we will hit this basement. And honestly, I might shoebox the crossbow. I wanted to try it out before doing so, because I was like, what if it's bananas? What if it's like the, uh, what do you call it? The Half-Life 2 one. But this is not, this is not like that. In fact, um, oh, this is an unrelated chest. Here we go. Yeah, let's grab that. Oh, right, I need to, um, I guess, I don't really know what I'm going to do with this. Quick slot, arbitrarily, we'll put it here for the moment. 
is five. Yeah, five is what it holds. Okay. I think we'll probably just like go ahead and give something one crossbow bolt and then just leave it unreloaded for a while afterward. Cause like the individual bolts certainly can be powerful. It's having to put more in that really sucks. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Right, Rose's handiwork. I guess we're going to probably see a fair amount of that down here. She said it's hard to find a place Shit. to hide the bodies, but like... I need to get the power back on. In theory, she has a huge basement. Right, in theory, you should be able to stash a lot down without here. Power. Okay, yeah. A lot of equipment down here. And of course, a big maze of chicken wire doors. Remember, buy more fuses, many more crappy old equipment keeps blowing them. Oh, cool, great. This town and its fuses. Well, let's see about this here. Barry's struggles. Yeah, he's, he's the one who's having the really tough time here, right? Wheeler used to be the agent of a manic depressive celebrity writer. Alan Wake. Wake had various addictions on his back. An on-off death wish. Wheeler had seen a thing or two. Wheeler paid a lot of money for a good shrink. Got himself convinced that all the nightmares he'd seen leading up to Wake drowning himself were just his imagination. PTSD. Now we had pills to keep the shadows from his sleep. But the Andersons were something else. The nightmares were starting to creep in again. Or maybe it was the drugs in the air. Wheeler hoped it was the drugs. The Andersons were so old. Vampires. After every gig in the party that followed, it took them weeks to bounce back. And they never did completely. Each time Wheeler expected them to croak. You know, we haven't seen hide nor hair of Barry. Do we, do we have a sense of what happened to him? And maybe he's back in New York just kind of like doing his thing. But, I don't know. I keep expecting him to be introduced. Interesting that this is here without any light around it. That's fine. We'll just go ahead and save and... I don't want to shoebox this just yet, I don't think. When we find the fuse, it's not going to have to go in our normal inventory, right? So, ah, all right, maybe I'm changing my mind. Let's just go ahead and shoebox this and its ammunition. It's cool in theory, but gosh, it's an awful lot of hassle in, to operate in reality. All right, and that being the case, get some more of this. And actually, let me let me re quick slot this to just normal three. All right, put this thing through its paces next. It doesn't budge. Of course not. Ah, uh, that is manuscript. Saga scans it quickly and then puts it away because, like. It's not like the information on it could matter, and right? Elwood had had enough. All his life he'd been surrounded by the same small-minded, impolite, ignorant people in town. Their endless gossip, their nose-picking, chewing food with their mouths open, not washing their hands after visiting the restroom, and touching things. Touching everything. The world was going to hell. He'd watch day after day how all the nice things in life in Bright Falls were spoiled and ruined forever. There would be a just and terrible reckoning. Emmett had imagined many times how he'd make them pay. He had lovingly tended his anger, made it grow hotter. It was out in the open now, 
ugly and slobbering. They reached at him with their unwashed hands. He beat them down, beat them until they no longer moved. And then he'd wash his hands with a strong antibacterial disinfectant. Well, you know, it's important to have a plan in life. It's important to have a... I guess, in standards to some... I don't, I don't know. Well, you know we're gonna have to go down there, but I don't like any part of it. Is that going to take me to an area I couldn't get to? Hmm. I've maybe not been keeping the closest eye on exactly where we... Alright, you know what? I'm not going to play with the projector right now. I'm sure it will be a terrible time when I do. House of Zane. Renowned filmmaker establishes artist commune in Bright Falls. Thomas Zane, born Thomas Sen, Sane, maybe, in Finland? Sinne, maybe? I have no idea. And his partner, Barbara Jagger, born Baba Jakala in Finland, have recently established an artist commune here in Bright Falls. Mr. Zane has purchased the old manor house outside town, and the couple has already settled in. In his home country, and internationally as well, Mr. Zane is a well-known and respected auteur filmmaker, a rising star already compared to the likes of Stanley Kubrick and Ingmar Bergman. His earlier film, Nightless Night, won a number of European film awards. Mr. Zane is currently in the process of filming a feature entitled Tom the Poet. In conversation, Mr. Zane comes across as a charismatic figure with big dreams. He talks about building a hotel and a film studio in the area. He even has a name picked out for the hotel, The Ocean View. This reporter believes, uh, this reporter believes the name has a nice ring to it. Mr. Zane's dreams would certainly make Bright Falls a household name if they became reality. Members of the commune clearly feel the same, seeing Zane as a person worth revering, even to a faintly cult-like degree, a person who guides his flock to expand their consciousness and reach a higher state of artistic inspiration with the aid of magic mushrooms. While the Bright Falls record does not condone the use of illegal drugs, we hope Mr. Zane will help put our town on the artistic map. So he was a poet, right, in the story as we got it earlier. Um, right, and then I guess this is like Alan rewriting his history to make him more useful to the story? Where instead he is making a film entitled Tom the Poet? I think. Okay, we don't have this. Cynthia Weaver had always kept her lantern close. Someone in the bathroom with her. In the dark. Dark water pressed itself into her. She screamed. See that right there? That's one to just like read all the way through. Don't. Cynthia Weaver hated being old. She'd been a doer, a fighter. Now the bathroom frightened her, afraid she'd break her hip, like Norman. Cynthia had always kept her lantern close to hold the darkness at bay. Oh dear, my lantern. I think I've lost it, Cynthia said. This will put a smile back on your face, my dear, a voice said. A man's voice. Someone in the bathroom with her, in the dark. The light bulb had blown. She meant to replace it days ago. How could she forget? She had slipped getting out of the tub. She lay in the tub now. She lifted her hand. It looked wrong. Too many hands. In a black void with no sense of up or down, she was underwater. A dark shape pushed her down. Dark water pressed itself into her. She screamed. It came out of bubbles. Yeah, that's, um... That's very upsetting. <laughs> they don't really, like, specialize the animations to the type of door there. That was very clearly a doorknob turn that we just did. Uh, 
This is something. No, no it is not. It is a big box of nothing. But it is, I suppose, at the very least, a big box. Can I get into... Okay, yes, we can get into this area. Code is 273. Rose, if you see this, please remind the residents to leave my stuff alone. I think they hate me. Yeah, he really, really is... He is absolutely certain that all of the residents of the place uh, just want to ruin his life. Feels a little paranoid to me. Okay, where did we see... Was it in here that we... Yep, here we go. 273. Fuses? A fuse, at least. A fuse. Could come in handy. Interesting. Okay, uh... Now, where exactly is the fuse box from here? It'd be right on this side of... Uh... Never mind, it's right here. Thank you, spooky there. laugh. Power's back on. All right, that makes a little bit more sense out of this, huh? Okay, let's try to get um, back out of here. Because this sucks very much. Shit. Careful, Saga. So we did see at least one door down here that was locked with the fob. Although it looks like it's still... Oh, no, okay. The red ones do still open if I just swipe the fob on them. It's weird because, like, a bunch of the rooms that were locked to us before were unlocked the moment we picked the fob up. But then, whatever. It doesn't really matter, but it's just weird and a little counterintuitive. And it means I probably could have actually gotten into some rooms upstairs. So let's, um... Let's keep that in mind when we get back up there. <laughs> I really, 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 really could do without the big screaming face in your face thing that the game keeps doing. It sucks so much. Okay, so. Let us... Did I just see, uh, no, maybe not, maybe, maybe so. Okay, sorry about that, had a very ill-timed little real life interruption there. Because uh, it turns out my asthma is not super sensitive to like the dramatic timing of the game. I think there's a sound of broken glass, breaking glass, coming from Odin's room. Buddy, you okay? Yeah, okay. It's not actually happening in here. This is fucking rad, by the way. Alright. Well, I am going to try this right here. No, this we're not even allowed to try. Hey, Ati. Uh, you know what? I left a piece of healing gear in here. Feels like I might want to take that. All right, so can I actually open this one with the key fob? Yes, the ocean view looking one, still no. This is openable. Well, let's see what we can learn. A dam? Was Cynthia into civil engineering? Just, you know, recreationally. Well, okay, that's obviously something. Cynthia would deal with the nasty Anderson fellow, Tor, always poking people with his hammer. He had it coming. Okay, can we please... 
Find place needs to be available. Finish. Uh, okay, didn't zoom me to the manuscript pages right away this time. There we go. Cynthia Weaver smiled. Lost without her lantern? Nonsense. Cynthia felt as giddy as a young girl in love. Cynthia had loved Thomas Zane. Tom only had eyes for Barbara. Barbara was bad news. Tom had seen it in the end. Cynthia had been there to comfort him. And when he left, Cynthia waited. Years of waiting. Now Tom had come back to her. They'd be together now. See the world. She'd always dreamed of seeing New York. They were there now in a fancy hotel. She drew a bath. She would become like Barbara. No. Better. She sank into dark water. Into Tom. Tom had enemies plotting against him. Cynthia would deal with the nasty Anderson fellow, Tor, always poking people with his hammer. He had it coming. Anything for Tom. Huh. All right. Yeah, this is not exactly what I thought we were going to discover had happened to the Lamplady. The Dark Presence uses people's memories, their fears to corrupt them. I went down to the basement today to check the lights. I can't trust Blum to do it, he's too slow. But it's getting harder and harder for me to reach them. I can't keep up much longer. Tom's lamp is gone. The lamp with the angel on it. He always loved that lamp. It disappeared from my room. The darkness is here after all these years. It took Tom's lamp. I know it did. The lights are going out more and more. There's no one left to stop it. I can't do it on my own. Not anymore. I have nothing left of Tom now. I don't know what I'm going to, to do. I need Tom's lamp back. I need Tom back. The shadows are moving. There is no more light. No more lamps. I can't find my way out of the room. Someone locked the door. Did I lock it? Maybe Tom did. He probably did it to keep me safe. He is such a considerate man. Barbara doesn't deserve him. Tom could, go, Tom could do so much better. Where did Tom's lamp go? I used to have it. I guess he took it back. That's fine. It was his, after all. The shadows are moving. Did I write that? Nonsense. There are no shadows. It's just us. Tom and I. Forever. I found something funny while I was down there. A newspaper article about Tom. But it called him a filmmaker. Tom didn't make movies. He was a poet. A magnificent poet. I dug around and found some film equipment, supposedly also Tom's. But what is happening? This isn't right. I know it isn't. And you're getting some, like, degradation of the punctuation and stuff over time. Yeah, this is... The Dark Place, like, as a kind of dementia, like, that overtakes you is, I think, one of the scariest things about it. One of the scariest, like, expressions of it. Huh. I'm guessing the woman in this photograph was not Cynthia's favorite. And, I mean, we do already know what the, where that photograph is from. I feel like from. I'm missing some context here. A lantern. Um, for the people who didn't play the first game... Was Cynthia using it for protection? <clears throat> this was the room in the Did first game? Did you know about the Dark Presence? I believe um, on that on that like cheap shitty folding table was the box that had the clicker in it. It's this extremely well lit room that she has. It's underground somewhere in Bright Falls, um, and it's you know lit like this for the purpose of there being no shadows in it at all. A power station. Huh. Hmm. Everyone needs a hobby, I guess. Yeah, I mean she was obsessed with light and hmm. Tor's a romantic, huh? Also chocolates, you know. I think we can all kind of understand that. All right. So I guess this is the only room left. It is very disappointing that we can't get into the one that looks like the ocean view. Oh, that's not the right button. That's extremely not the right button. Please turn flashlight back on. Okay. Yeah. 
Not much to this one. So many creepy noises. <laughs> these off-brand, clearly. These are legally distinct from Ritz crackers. Wheeler set up a foundation with the sales of their greatest hits album. He used the cash to build a nursing facility. The old men deserved it. An old manor in Bright Falls. Wheeler hired a contractor to have it refitted as an old folks' care home. At this point, Wheeler felt good about himself. He had a heart of gold. No need to feel guilty. Wheeler left the work to the contractor and returned to New York City. He had done his part. It was time to turn over a new leaf. The contractors figured out Wheeler was gone for good. They took the money and ran. When the fall rains came, the leaks started appearing. Yeah, okay. Well, that's pretty much as we expected for what happened to Barry. Yep, every single time I walk out here, these fucking banisters. Are these, I don't know what you call the, the knobs at the top of the, um, at the top of these posts, but yeah, those are, those are carefully calculated to look just enough like a human shape to make you panic, and then just enough not like it to make you feel like an idiot that you kind of had a momentary panic. All right, let's see what's up. Trashed hotel rooms and ruined pools. Crowds go wild for the Old Gods of Asgard Ragnarok tour. The rock and roll group Old Gods of Asgard are leaving chaos in their wake as they plow through the major U.S. cities on their aptly named Ragnarok tour. The band is breaking their sales records with singles chop uh, topping the charts and have their la latest sold-out concert in Long Beach, California. The fans showed their love for the reckless rockers by showering the stage with lacy unmentionables, black roses, and even full beer bottles. I don't know if that's love. None of this fazed the stars uh, themselves, who embraced the admiration and transitioned from song to song with such gusto that the audience was left catching their breath, eager to keep up with the brothers Anderson and their cohorts. After hours shenanigans for the musicians included a pool in a private residential neighborhood left to be emptied and sanitized, and a hotel room nearly destroyed in a classical fashion, not to mention the lengthy room service bill gone unpaid. All things point to this band quickly becoming a strong contender to the iconic Hall of Fame rock groups that came before them. Old Gods of Asgard party like their namesakes and give a performance like no other. Be sure to catch them on their tour and bear witness to rock history in the making. Uh, and then, <laughs> the legendary heavy rock band Old Gods of Asgard mourns the loss of their divinely talented guitarist, Bob Balder. Fat Bob, as he was affectionately and ironically called, died from complications of a severe illness. Leaving his bandmates Odin and Tor Anderson behind, the peace-loving musician will be sorely missed, also by the band's numerous fans. That's an odd way to write that sentence. When asked about the loss, Tor Anderson had this to say, colon, Get the expletive out of my face. Baldur's in Valhalla now. He fought cancer like a hero. Bob was too beautiful a soul for this world, added Odin. What this means for the band and their upcoming album remains to be seen. Rock music is the ancient language of the soul, muses Old Gods of Asgard's lead singer. I sit down with the Anderson brothers of Old Gods of Asgard fame in the lobby of a rundown hotel somewhere in downtown Detroit. Currently on their Ragnarok hit tour... The busy band members have only a moment to spare to a fledgling journalist and his questions before running off to soundcheck for their concert tonight. So how's the reception been? Amazing. The fans understand what we're about. They get rock and roll. They get the spirit. They know we're not here to censor around. So why do you do what you do? I can tell you're new at this, buddy. Why does anyone do what they do? For the glory and the fame? For the money and the sex? Or because you have something inside of you that is going to burst out if you don't start using it? It's, it's the latter. That's a good answer. How about the music, then? What is it about music that compels you? Well, that should be pretty obvious. This is boring me to death, bro. Let's get moving. I mean, it, Odin's apologizing here, but this is a shit interview, right? As they stand up to leave for the tour bus waiting outside, the larger-than-life rockers turn around for one final quote. 
Music, especially rock and roll, is the ancient language of the soul, man. It's in me. It's godly. And it'll come out like a thunderstorm. Also, just like, who is, who is writing, you know, censored and redacted? Like, if you're not willing to publish the thing that the guy says, maybe just, like, don't do an interview. You know? I hate the, I hate the, the very, very juvenile idea that, like, there are some words if you don't print them, it's like, I don't know. Uh, this does not exactly seem super valuable to us, though. At least the records around here somewhere. Although, remarkably, not here. Yep. Angus cool. Remorse. Great. This is the one. But it's gone. Cynthia has the record. She will tell me where to find it. To memorialize the only pressing of the unreleased single, Anger's Remorse. Okay. I mean, that's pretty much how that was always going to be, right? This is going to be useful. Cynthia targeted Tor specifically. Why him? Deal with a nasty Anderson fellow. His heart was broken. Cancelled. Leaks started appearing. It was too late. Shut her out of her own case. The dark presence is using Cynthia to keep me from talking to Tor. Cynthia was close to someone named Thomas Sane. Who is he? Tom was back. Tom had enemies. In a fancy hotel. Just his imagination. A nightmare started to creep in. Cynthia Weaver smiled. An old flame. Maybe Tom was taken. Where is Angus Remorse now? He is a young girl in love. A rock and roll twigs it. The shadows to come alive. A gift. An on of death wish. She has the record. I can get it out of her. Angus Remorse. Where is it, Cynthia? Drowned beneath dark water. Too many hands. The bathroom frightened her. Cut short. She screamed. An old folks care home. The Angus Remorse record is in Cynthia's room. In her bathtub. All right, well, I guess let's go see about Cynthia that. Cynthia took the record and I brought it back. So, okay, we were supposed to do all of these things here. It's just I did them a little out of order because I am impatient for information about character stuff. Angus Remorse. By old gods of Asgard. I need to play it in the jukebox. Okay. And when we... When we do, something not great is going to happen, I'm sure. But the story said I would know what to do, right? Awful lot of noises down here all of a sudden. Oh cool, another one of these. Oh wow, okay.
Okay, given the amount of damage we know that takes, I think we can say some pretty positive things about this hunting rifle. <clears throat> Hold on, do I have profiling left to do here? Apparently I do. Anger's remorse is missing. Who took it? Our shame becomes the pale horse. Oh, Tor, bro. Tor's love for you is in that song. That's why Cynthia wants it, to ruin him. She made Tor lust after her. We fought one scratching hag years ago. Now he's fallen for another, and we might lose him for good. One less Anderson. That isn't going to happen. Cynthia has Tor in the overlap. Anga's remorse is the key to get there. I need to make Cynthia reveal its location. It's so weird that they would create a a profiling thing to ask somebody that can only have come after we got the original Anger's Remorse um, profiling bit, but that you are supposed to see before you push her about it, because there's no reason that you would ever not do those two things right next to each other, right? Like, the time between them is effectively zero, so why record something that's only supposed to take place in that time. That's very strange. Uh, while we're here, let's just go ahead and hit one of these. Okay. The song will show me the way. Look in the mirror, the cobweb of my soul. All right, it's going to be one of these. The overlap is at the pond. Driven by Oh, I was kind of hoping we were going to keep the music. Traditionally, that's been very good for us, you know. Well, this is... Hey, look, the lantern. Body of missing youth discovered in flooded bunker. The local girl, Nora Hesberg, age 15, who went missing on Saturday of last week, was discovered dead in the sealed underground bunker near Valhalla Nursing Home in Bright Falls. Cause of death has been determined to be drowning. The incident occurred during a gathering of local youths at the bunker. Nora was first reported missing by her parents Sunday morning, when they discovered their daughter had not returned home the night before. The police were contacted and they received a tip to check the bunker from one of the victim's acquaintances. The police are treating the tragedy as an accident. The community mourns the loss of its young member. Gone too soon indeed. So, what, the anguish around that is getting sort of twisted up and used as fuel for whatever's going on here. Mommy, what are you doing? Help me, please. This isn't real. And of course, you know, to turn against me. Help me. Fuck this place. Fuck this place indeed. I do not know what that sound is, but this obviously is not super productive. Um, am I... No, I am not locked in a real loop. Not yet. But progress in that direction is uh, maybe going to be a little tricky. What's over here? Kind of nothing, it feels like. Except for a lot of noises. A lot of noises everywhere. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't know. This area doesn't feel anything like anywhere we've been so far, which is weird. I can probably just... Yeah, may as well for these little ones. Is there anything? Yeah. I wish these were generally sat just like a little bit lower in the environment. This is kind of annoying to look into them. All right. Oh, right. Enter. Who has the enter key right now? Hold on. Which good has that done? The wall just disappeared. The light did that? Ah, okay, it's my turn. It's my turn for this. It's really hard to get her to take the flashlight batteries, but I do need them. Yeah, that's really frustrating. They're right there. Oh, okay. Hold on. There we go. I found an angle where I could get her to recognize them for just a moment. Will this actually open? Okay, well... The thing about the um, the big screaming jump scare faces is I don't think they actually are supposed to be jump scares most of the time. It's just that I'm so vulnerable to that kind of startling. Okay, is this text any different? Nora Hesburgh? No, it looks all the same. I was wondering if the presence of the light had had any effect. It's a loop, like the others. I need to reach the center. I really like the way they do that and overlay the two spaces on top of each other. Cynthia, she's here. Okay, this looks like it's probably not going to change at all. Not yet, anyway. A dead end. Oh, okay. It's not actually just looping our, um... That's interesting. I think we saw more turns than that before, right? Like, it was, it was doing a loop before? I think. Maybe not. The camera just got jostled pretty badly by the wall behind oh, us getting her place. <sighs> okay, so at some point it mirrors us in. supposed to be doing though at least in the past with these a fair amount of the time the answer has just been run through the loop on purpose a few times well hold on this looks new and they do love to make you go through a crawling room it's weird how common that's been actually
Okay, this might be something she says immediately crashing to another dead end. Well, at least we got some good supplies out of it. Is there nowhere else to... No, it doesn't really seem there's anywhere else to go. Okay, back out, I guess. There were some stairs up here. That's different. This is a change in the loop, right? Locked. The key has to be nearby. Does it? Do we think that? Is that... Is that solid? I guess let's throw that light switch and see if that reveals it, maybe? Well, it does delete the cabinet, so that complicates things slightly. Hmm. In the side chamber, maybe? All right, well, that's a kind of key. There are some things that we will be opening with that. Okay, crossbow bolts. First to get dropped if we find we can't get through something. This is another, another bolt cutter spot, huh? Appreciate the light making ah cool. Appreciate the light making uh, drawers full of extra supplies up here. That's very handy. Can I just drop? I don't honestly. I don't know that we even want these. Ah, long presses. Everything with the long presses these days. Okay, so flip this back off so we get our cabinet back and can open it. And here we go. The all important bolt cutters that apparently we're going to keep. That's actually pretty interesting that there's, it's a physical object that we acquire in an overlap that we're going to have to be able to use in the actual real outside world. I mean, I guess that's not really like all that interesting because we already have one of those. It's called Alan Wake. Everybody's got strong feelings about Deerfest. Huh. I wonder if those are just there to keep you from, like, backing up out of the fight quickly. Obviously, we care a great deal about the tool. Uh, about the uh, the bolts to be cut, and I will engage with that presently. Okay, doesn't look like there's anything actually in here. It's just supplies. Let's go employ our bolt cutters. A 
at some point we're gonna have to fight I'm assuming a version of Cynthia Writing a story. I have to admit I was not expecting it to take quite this long to get to her news articles no longer here A lot more electricity pouring down in this area, which should worry me deeper. more than it probably does. Okay, nothing in that one. It's weird how they spawn containers in the environment and have me open them only to give me no things. Well, this looks awfully significant. Assuming, uh, okay, here we go. You took Tor. I'm here to take him back. I need to get the lights on to reach him. Saga. Damn, dark down here. Under water. She's trapped me at the bottom. I don't think I'm gonna make it. Okay, that rubber duck's not like following me or anything. Okay, so we're just trying to make it we're trying to make it to somewhere here to turn the lights on. I just need to be very aware because something is going to try to drag us down. Right, I want to make a run for this. Let's see if this is too far. How am I going to get in? Is that a door? No. I don't actually know how to get to where I'm going, nor do I actually know where I'm going. This looks like it could be useful. No, I get it. Yeah, this looks good. Shit, this is just supplies. This doesn't loop. I thought this was going to link around. Uh, all right. I got to get out of the water. Okay. Where is she? I mean, she's everywhere, right? This is the point. Huh? 
But it seems like the moment I press the interact button on an interactable that gets you out of the water, um, I'm safe. It's not like I have to um, leave enough time to actually complete the animation. Okay, a lot of containers having literally nothing or effectively nothing in them. So I definitely can't just get in there. But yeah, it's not at all clear to me where I am supposed to be trying to get to. This one has, you know, a nicer light in it. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Here we go. Alright, we got it. We got it. We got it. I'm gonna... <clears throat> I'm going to get it. Okay. Yeah, the amount of just like I'm not leaving you here, Tor. Hold on. The amount of just go until you think you have proven that going is not helpful and then go some more that this game has in it is really interesting like thematically. Is there any benefit to getting all the way over here? No, it doesn't seem like it. Can I climb up on this? Is this too high? No, this works. Alright, I th think the thing in the middle is how I actually turn the lights on. Feels a lot less bad. Talon, I'm sorry I fucked everything. But he's clearly you not here. Apologize to him yourself. If he's cold and dark. I'm getting you the hell out of here. Is he outside, maybe? Or wait, okay, there's a way down. Boy, the, the distortion levels are getting pretty intense, huh? Saga? Uh, I think a thing is happening here that shouldn't ought to be happening. Yeah, there's something wrong with... I gotta get away from that piece of terrain. It's causing huge problems. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the fuck happened there, but that was not my fault. <laughs> There's something wrong with that piece of terrain. Okay, so we will... She's shooting, like... She's shooting objects at us that are not just things to be directly avoided, but they're, like... They're, like, rockets, I guess? It seemed like the thing that she... The last thing she threw at us was pretty far off to our right, and then we took a hit from our right, so it was, like, um... It was like it exploded. I'm you the hell out of here. So I just have to go for Okay, 
So each of them is individually lightable, but also it's extremely not worth it because you can just get away from them. I'm not sure that I, that I was hitting there. God, the animations on this thing. Ah. Back up, lady. Hunting rifle is really clumsy to use, but it's powerful. The FBI, Saga Anderson. I'm closer now. I can feel it. You help me get closer to escaping. Wait. Where are you? Is this coming from the dark place when you were still trapped? I have the clicker. We can finish this. Without the clicker, you can help. Must find it. I already have it. I can get it to you. But I have to understand. Did you write Logan into the story? Last in danger. I need to get back. I'm writing a story. It's the only way. Then change the story. If this is the past, if this is you still in the dark place, then you can do that, right? You cannot write her in. She's my daughter, goddammit! Logan is in the story. I can get him to change it. I have the clicker. I'll make him change it now. He had no right to do this to Logan. To my family. Tor! Uh. Oh, fucking hell. Are you okay? Uh, hey, it took your sweet time to come save your grandpa, huh? Uh. Nice attitude. A family trait? Uh, uh, you're right. Sorry. Thanks for helping out an old bastard like me. That's my job. Now, I've got some questions for you. <laughs> of course you do, sweetie pie. <laughs> and I got answers. <laughs> well, that'll be a nice change of pace. <laughs> Oof, I feel like I really earned that one, you know? Look in the mirror, the cobweb. I, I think we are just gonna go ahead. No, no offense to the, you know. All right. We have things to learn. We have so much to do, but also I just have no time to do it in. That is gonna have to be it for us for today. And thank you all so much for watching. When you come back next time, maybe some goddamn answers, huh? Sounds pretty nice. And we'll see you then.